San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the economy continues to recover from the coronavirus pandemic. For the first time since last June, we are seeing fewer than 30,000 new COVID cases each day in the U.S. And here at home, outside with live cam, a little more humid this morning. Any more rain in the forecast this weekend? Mike Osterhage is standing by with more. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It is May 21st. Happy Friday. Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, so no, I know yesterday I was excited about the break in the rain, but then it got hot. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was a gorgeous morning and we did pay for it in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It did get very warm around here. Yes. Mike Osterhage joins us now. Yeah, and there was just enough humidity yesterday to, to make it noticeable yes. where you're like, OK, and we made it up into the mid 80s. We're going to be up in the mid 80s again. And then the humidity really, like you said, stuck around overnight. Night. So, uh, you know, yesterday we had that nice little break, but um, no, not this morning. And uh, yeah, as far as rain chances, they will start to come back into the picture once we get into the weekend. It's not going to be any sort of a, a washout, but again, just a few uh, showers here and there. There's also a couple of specks of some uh, fog. Visibility is down to five miles. Casterville seven in New Braunfels. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but just watch out as we you know go through the morning, as is usually the case. Now, temperatures. Yeah, whole different story. Yesterday we did drop down to 59 degrees, and it's not going to happen this morning. We've got uh, mid 60s in parts of the hill country 70 right now Stinson the reason for it, that we're not going to be dropping down you can't drop any lower than what these numbers are the dew point temperatures and they have definitely gone up yesterday they were everybody was down in the 50s for these numbers but no nope, humidity has come back and it's going to be sticking around for a while mold still on the high side but it did come down from the previous day's reading and as far as the rest of today we're going to stay basically steady this morning mostly cloudy skies and southeasterly wind is going to pick up about 10 15 miles per hour a shower is possible today. One or two. It's not going to be a big deal today. Somewhat better rain chances over the weekend. Like I said, not a washout. If you have outdoor plans, um, I think it should be okay, but mm, take an umbrella just to be on the, uh, the safe side. And how much longer will rain chances stick around? We'll answer that question coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, Bear County Sheriff's Office says a drunk man led deputies on a chase overnight. It started near Loop 410 in San Pedro just before 1 a.m. BCSO says the driver failed to stop after he was seen caught it, cutting off another driver and hitting a guardrail. Deputies initially lost sight of him, but he, then he was seen running a red light at Vance Jackson and Cherry Ridge. BCSO was able to catch up with him as he pulled into his own driveway, where he was then taken into custody by deputies. U.S. economy, a growing challenge as we recover from the pandemic. First, the good news. For the first time since last June, we're seeing fewer than 30,000 new COVID cases each day here in the U.S. However, the bad news, vaccination rates are slowing down quite a bit. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, a new push to get people back to work with cash. As COVID cases drop sharply and more restrictions are lifted, many businesses are facing a new problem. They say unemployment benefits from the federal government are working against them. Well, some people are looking for work and some people are not. In response, Colorado is now offering people up to $1,600 to forego unemployment benefits and return to work full time. Connecticut and Arizona are also planning to give out bonuses to people who go back to work. It comes as more states offer cash prizes to get more people vaccinated. In New York City, the governor announced lottery scratch tickets for people who are vaccinated with a $5 million top prize. Everybody wins. You have a one in nine chance of winning the lottery, uh, but... You get the vaccine and you win. And vaccinated people in Maryland now have a chance to win $40,000 every day for 40 days with a grand prize of $400,000. Go out and get vaccinated for your chance to win a share of this $2 million. In West Virginia, people 16 to 35 who get the shot can now register for a $100 savings bond or gift card. President Biden has set a new goal of getting 70 percent of adults vaccinated with at least one shot by July 4th. But now that percentage is still under 50 percent and vaccination rates are slowing down. Meanwhile, the American Federation of Teachers has sent a new letter to the CDC seeking clarity on the agent's mask guidelines, which are causing confusion. The union of 1.7 million teachers asking several questions, including what to do in facilities mixed with students who are eligible for the vaccine and those who are not. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York.
And here at home, we continue to see a drop in the average number of COVID-19 cases. The seven day rolling average in Bear County now at 138 cases per day. One new death was reported and 154 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. When it comes to the vaccine rollout, we are nearing a major milestone. More than 995,000 people have at least one dose of a vaccine here in Bear County. That number expected at 1 million by Monday. When it comes to full vaccinations, 44.6% of people 12 and up have both doses of vaccine. Rural school districts are wrapping up a very different year than what they started with. Somerset ISD says about 83% of their students are back in the classroom, and they started with about 38%. The students who were learning virtually uh, initially were struggling. We had about 70% failure rate of all students who were learning online. The school district reporting with the help of community labs and testing being available, a lot of families felt comfortable sending kids back. The district says their highest positive numbers were following the winter break when 54 people tested positive, but they've had pretty low numbers for about three months now. And the push is for vaccine drives to get all kids 12 and up with the vaccinations. The superintendent says it's been a very stressful year and students, especially seniors, should be very proud of themselves. I just like to say I'm proud of them. They've persevered and uh, they can uh, uh, be successful through a pandemic. They can uh, overcome anything, any obstacles that they face in life. They tell us that school will be 100% in person next year. Many students will be sent to summer school to catch up. COVID-19 testing will continue in the summer for those students. 436, about 69 degrees. And you have a teenager that can't wait to get behind the wheel. We're going to show you which vehicles are considered to be the most safe. And up next, what happens uh, now following the ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas? And taking a look outside with live cam. No rain for now, but maybe expecting some showers over the weekend. We'll be right back. Just about 440, Israel and Hamas have agreed to a ceasefire halting an 11-day war that left more than 200 people dead. The intense barrages from both sides over nearly two weeks were the worst since 2014. And a sign of the challenges ahead, both sides gave a different version of the ceasefire terms, but so far it appears to be holding. The United States, Israel's closest and most important ally, backed what it said was Israel's right to self-defense. President Biden said the U.S. was committed to helping Israel and to working with the internationally recognized Palestinian Authority, not Hamas, to provide humanitarian aid to Gaza. Fewer Americans sought unemployment and last week the latest encouraging sign for the rebounding U.S. economy. At the same time, Republican-led states are moving to cut off a federal benefit for the jobless. 23 states, including Texas, plan to begin blocking a $300 a week federal payment for the unemployed starting in June. Jobless people have been able to receive the $300 of federal benefits on top of their regular state unemployment aid. Nearly 70 big cats have been removed from an Oklahoma animal park that was featured in the Netflix documentary series Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem and Madness. According to the Justice Department, 68 protected lions, tigers, lion tiger hybrids and a jaguar were seized from the Thackerville Zoo because of ongoing violations of the Endangered Species Act. Inspectors from the U.S. Department of Agriculture conducted three inspections of the park starting in December. The park owners Jeff and Lauren Lowe received several citations, including failing to provide the animals with adequate or timely vet care, appropriate nutrition and shelter. The Lowe's bought the zoo from Joseph Maldonado Passage, a.k.a. Joe Exotic. Well, the Spurs are done, but the missions keep rolling. Now we're at a little baseball at Wolf Stadium after losing the first two home games in a row. The missions finally got a win over Frisco last night. The final 3-1. to one. The two teams play again tonight, starting at 7.05. All right, congrats and good luck again. Right now, it is 4.41 on your Friday morning. If you have a new team driver looking to head to the road after the break, we're going to tell you what's the best option for cars when it comes to safety. And next, we'll tell you which states are offering big money and cash prizes in order to encourage people to get vaccinated.
In this morning's GMA First Look, the big chance of getting money for getting vaccinated. Governors across America pulling out all the stops to reach President Biden's goal of having 70% of adults vaccinated with one shot by July 4th. Ohio already seeing big results with their lottery since announcing prizes like a $1 million prize for adults and a full ride scholarship to any state university for kids 12 to 17. They've seen a 28% increase in their vaccination numbers. Now Maryland is catching the lottery fever. Get your shot for a shot to win. And in New York, Governor Cuomo offering scratch-off tickets to those vaccinated that could be worth up to $5 million. Everybody wins. You have a one in nine chance of winning the lottery, uh, but you get the vaccine and you win. We'll have much more on these big vaccine incentives coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. If you're shopping for a car for a new graduate or a teen who needs to get a summer job, safety is a big part of your decision. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris tells us some of the best cars for teens. Teenagers, inexperience and immaturity make them the riskiest drivers. So when shopping for a used car for a teen, safety is high priority. The used car market is really tough right now, but that doesn't mean you should sacrifice important safety features like electronic stability control or the latest accident avoidance systems, which are especially important for young drivers. Take a look. The car on the top has electronic stability control. The one on the bottom does not. Consumer Reports tested cars for handling and braking. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety weighed in with crash tests, and they came up with 61 used cars that checked the boxes, safety, reliability, and affordability. All are priced between $6,000 and $20,000. So here are some of their best choices. For smaller cars, the Mazda 3, 2014 or newer. Toyota Prius, 2014 or newer. A little bigger, Subaru Outback or Legacy, 2013 or newer. Honda Accord, 2013 or newer, and among SUVs, the Chevy Equinox, 2017 and 2019. Cars that are too small, too big, or have high horsepower are not included on the list. To see the entire list of the best cars for teens, used and new, just head to our website. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Right now it is 447. If you're just now waking up, it's time to get a sneak peek at our Friday and our weekend. Yeah, how's it looking so far, Mike? Well, it's going to feel a lot more like um, like May. You know, we had that break yesterday, but the humidity is definitely back. And uh, I think we'll see this is a great uh, picture of the sunrise yesterday from Yvonne Journey. And I think we'll see something similar to this today. We do have some clouds out there right now, and some folks are seeing just clear skies. So a few extra clouds hanging around uh, this morning. One thing you do notice when you step outside and this was yesterday afternoon too. how the humidity started to come back in there and yeah skies really cleared out nicely yesterday and that humidity has stuck around so these numbers the dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere have gone up about five to ten degrees compared to this time yesterday so it's more humid out there and it's going to be staying very humid out there we've got we had all the sunshine yesterday and there's the clear skies or the dry air i should say aloft in the atmosphere when you get this kind of brownish shade on the water vapor imagery that just means bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere but here's a lot of moisture and this is going to start to kind of push its way in here and this is being fed from a disturbance and we've had you know these disturbances kind of hanging around here this week and the one sort of just scooched down into the, the Gulf of Mexico and it's sort of sitting there in the Gulf of Mexico and spinning well this time of year the hurricane center has now started to kind of focus in on that and hurricane center says 20% chance of development over the next two days or even the next five days which basically means there's not much of a chance of anything really getting going as far as a tropical system down here. But one thing it's going to do is it's going to be a good mo uh, moisture pump. And so that will continue to push all the, the moisture in here. That's why the humidity goes up. We'll also have a couple of sprinkly showers, one or two of them today. And one thing you can kind of take away from this is most everything would be further to the east, but there will be you know, one or two today. A couple more tomorrow. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you have any outdoor plans tomorrow. Uh, take an umbrella, have it handy just uh, just in case, but it's not by any means going to be a washout. A thunderstorm or two is also possible. And then going into Sunday, perhaps a little bit better chance for a couple of showers. And we'll keep that chance for a couple of showers around. Not a, a huge 
you know, not everybody's seeing rain, not a huge chance of rain, but that's going to be sticking around even into the middle part of next week. And then we're going to start to get back. We've been kind of spoiled lately. Then we're going to start to warm back up to what you would expect heading into the end of May. 80 degrees today at noon. Mixture of sunshine and clouds. We'll call it that. And then partly cloudy skies. A shower is possible. I wouldn't really, you know, lose sleep over it, but just one or two of them here and there. Then we go into tomorrow and a little bit better chance for a couple of showers or, a, you know, a thunderstorm here or there in the afternoon. One or two sprinkles around in the morning. Same thing Sunday, Monday, a mm, couple more here and there, and then one or two, just an afternoon shower or two, even going into the middle of next week. And we're going to get back up into the upper 80s. That's a average temperature, though. That's yes. normal by the end of the week. Considering what's happened the last two or three weeks, this forecast is relatively dull. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Pretty much you so. Know. But just, you know, again, a shower. Just it might happen. Don't be surprised by it. Right, this okay. weekend. That sounds good. Thanks, Mike. About 10 till right now on your Friday morning. Glad you're with us. And up next, how Hollywood is doing everything it can to get people back in theaters, plus details on the special film role for Marvel superstar Anthony Mackie. Pick three numbers this morning, 258 Fireball 4. Daily four numbers, 8142 Fireball 0. Cash 5, 1, 14, 23, 26, 28. And your Texas two-step, 4, 11, 15, 20. Bonus ball 5. As the pandemic winds down, Hollywood really wants you back in theaters. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Mark Remillard. Hollywood wants fans back in front of the big screen. Actor and former California governor Arnold Schwarzenegger was joined by filmmakers and studio executives as part of the Big Screen is Back initiative. The industry seeking to rebound as vaccinations increase and safety restrictions ease nationwide. It's very important to, to me and, and to IFC that the film is experienced in, in a theater because, you know, when you're at home and you're, you're watching a, a film like Holler, you know, dogs barking, food's being delivered. It's wrong. Anthony Mackie says he chose to take on his role in Solos because it provided an opportunity many black actors don't get. Solos is a seven-part anthology series on Amazon Prime that the company says, quote, explores the truth of what it means to be human, with each episode centering around a new character. But we don't get the opportunity to play like natural human beings to emote in a way that's honest and unique and real. In addition to Mackie, Anne Hathaway, Helen Mirren, and Morgan Freeman are among some of the actors starring in episodes of the series. Actor Billy Porter has announced he's living with HIV, telling The Hollywood Reporter shame was his silencer, even keeping the secret from his mother. After filming the final episode as the iconic character Pray Tell on the hit FX series Pose, he says he called his mom. Support for Porter pouring in almost immediately. The LGBTQ organization GLAAD said in a statement, quote, it's time to end this stigma. And happy birthday to Mr. T. But I pity the fool. The actor best known for his role on the A-Team turns 69. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Mark Remillard, ABC News. And again, I don't know where they found the file video of Mr. T with yeah. Ghost Trahage. Uh, that's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because... His doppelganger, his lookalike, has always been compared yeah. to the 18s, George Papard. Was right? it nice working with Mr. T? Was, it good? Was he a good guy? Nice guy. Nice guy, okay. That's what we always heard. Thank you, Mike. About 4.56 <laughs> on your Friday morning. And still ahead on GMSA, Israel and Hamas have agreed to a ceasefire halting an 11-day war that caused widespread destruction in the Gaza Strip. We're going to have reaction from the White House. Tell you about some augmented reality glasses that you overlay digital objects on the real world. That's ahead in Tech Bytes. Ahead on GMSA at 6, how much sleep should your kids really be getting and how has the pandemic affected their sleep patterns? We're going to be speaking with a pediatric sleep specialist and she's going to answer some of those questions. That's on GMSA at 6. And looking at the roads with Transkai, we've got a few cars out there. Stephen Cavazos now in the traffic lab. He has an update coming up. Live from KSAT 12, 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A ceasefire has been reached after days of fighting between Israel and Hamas. I'm Micah Jachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, scenes from the ground before the agreement was made. Outside right now, very mild, a bit on the muggy side. And Mike says, keep that umbrella handy as we head into the weekend. Good morning to you. It is Friday, May 21st. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you enjoyed the break in the rain yesterday. I guess we expect a few showers, but nothing crazy this weekend. That's what we're hearing from Mike Ostrage. Let's get the very latest. Mike, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, step outside, though. Uh, wow, humidity definitely returned. We had that nice little break yesterday, but um, it started coming back yesterday afternoon, and it's definitely out there. So. You've been warned 68 degrees right now. That is back to a normal low temperature. It seems kind of odd since we have been on the coolish side the past couple of mornings, but that's the uh, the average low temperature and the dew point is up to 65. Remember yesterday we when we dropped down to 59 degrees, those dew points were down well down into the 50s. That's all changed. Not much of a breeze out there and with all that extra moisture, there may be a couple of hints of fog around 85 for a high temperature today. And yeah, there's a you know a really small chance for a shower or two today. I really wouldn't count on it too much, but just one or two of them are going to be popping up here and there. The aquifer went up two tenths of a foot yesterday and the allergens, a lot of mold, although it did come down significantly from the previous day's reading when it was on the very high side, a little bit, a very high side, I should say, and there's a little bit of grass showing up. Visibility right now, again, nothing uh, too extreme, but it has dropped down to four miles at Hondo, five Castroville and New Braunfels. So Again, just keep an eye out for some of this fog over the next uh, few hours. So mostly cloudy skies. I think some folks will be seeing somewhat of a, uh, a little bit of a sunrise this morning. Humidity is definitely back and it's going to be sticking around. Partly cloudy skies today. Again, a shower or two. Not a big deal as far as rain is concerned. A couple of showers this weekend, maybe a 30 40 percent chance for shower thunderstorms. Not going to be a washout, but if you do have outdoor plans, just uh, take an umbrella like we we're talking about to be on the safe side. And even going into next week, we'll still have a little bit of rain around the area. You know, small chance for an afternoon shower thunderstorm to pop up, and it is going to be warming up. You know, we've gotten back up to the normal low temperature now. We'll be staying there over the weekend, and then high temperatures will get back up to where they should be by the mid to latter part of next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos is in the house. Good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, we go, busy start to our Friday morning, Mike, and we actually had a crash that just popped up there on our screen around uh, west of 151, around 410 in Callahan. We'll take a look at that uh, coming up here in the next few minutes, but we do have a crash that is happening right here. This is along uh, South Cross Boulevard at Southeast Drive. This has been here throughout the morning. We've been keeping tabs on this. It does look like it may be impacting traffic in those lanes of uh, WW White, so something that we will be keeping a very close eye on throughout the morning and see how that may affect your commute as we head into the weekend. We've also spotted a slowdown here in those eastbound lanes of I-10 near South Gevers. You can see that sl slow down to around 17 miles per hour. Yesterday we had to tell you about some construction that was happening in that area. If you're coming in from Seguin or going into Seguin, expect that around Zeal Road and I-10 in those east and westbound lanes. But right now, looks like that may be impacting those eastbound lanes this morning. Taking a look at the commute right now, 281, 26 minutes. If you're coming in from Bolverde, about 26 minutes on 35, coming into downtown San Antonio and about 24 minutes on 80 coming in from Lavernia. A look here at Transguide shows that we're getting a good start to the morning here in San Antonio. The roads looking nice and smooth here along 37 in Salado Creek. Nice and clear, which is what we like to see, which means we can get some time to get some coffee before heading to work this morning. Mark Seth, we'll have more coming up. Overnight, a major breakthrough in the ongoing violence between Israel and Hamas. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest from Washington. <laughs> Overnight, Palestinian families in Gaza seen celebrating, igniting fireworks over the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The region seeing 11 days of fighting, resulting in at least 260 Palestinians killed in the West Bank and Gaza, with over 3,300 wounded, 12 Israelis killed, and about 350 wounded. This morning, over 70,000 Palestinians left homeless. The decision, following days of intense international pressure, including Egyptian mediation efforts, and especially from President Biden, who on a fourth call in a week with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, called for significant de-escalation. I believe the Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely and to enjoy equal measures of freedom, prosperity, and democracy. My administration will continue our quiet, relentless diplomacy toward that end. Before the agreement, 
Israeli strikes shaking Gaza where they continue to bury their dead. Like this 11-year-old Palestinian girl, Dima Asala, her little body carried in on that litter. Her mother, experiencing a pain no parent can imagine, saying she was killed in an Israeli airstrike while getting food from a friend. Meanwhile, Hamas also pounding Israel with rockets. ABC's Matt Gutman was there. Well, you can see the Iron Dome right behind us over there. You can see it right there. Those were the rockets that were coming in. On this side, oh, families' lives are also altered forever. Gonna... Like this woman in a shelter, her son remaining in their Israeli home when a Gaza rocket destroyed their house. He made it out okay. He said, Mom, I'm fine. Calm down. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Secretary of State Antony Blinken is scheduled to travel to the Middle East in the coming days to meet with Israeli, Palestinian, and other regional leaders. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, early voting begins Monday for the upcoming runoff elections. District 2 is one that's changed hands a lot in recent elections. Incumbent Jada Andrew Sullivan and challenger Jalen McKee Rodriguez both took to the stage last night in a debate to try to persuade voters. McKee Rodriguez able to grab 26% of the vote in the May election, while Andrew Sullivan had 17%, neither enough to win. Andrew Sullivan is saying her focus is on development in District 2. Development that is not brought to the city and brought to the community without them seeing it happen. Um, we need to change the structure of how we're doing development, and so that's what really sticks out. Meanwhile, challenger Jalen McKee Rodriguez was asked the same question. He did not speak on a particular topic, only that change is needed. When we're knocking on doors, people are passionate, people are upset, people are angry. They want a change. They don't know what that change always is. Some people want bold, progressive change. Everybody wants bold change, and that comes with new leadership. Along with District 2, there are several other runoff races taking place. Voters will head back to the polls to decide races in Districts 1, 3, 5, and 9. Election Day is on June 5th. We have all your election coverage right now on KSAT.com. And Fiesta's famous night in Old San Antonio is keeping the pandemic in mind. So tickets are limited to reduce crowding and those tickets will only be sold online. Meanwhile, NIOSA is also following CDC guidance, meaning those who are fully vaccinated will not be required to wear a mask. And those who do not have the vaccine are being asked to mask up. And be aware the event will use a cashless pay system. We have all those details as well as a link for NIOSA tickets on KSAT.com. I can't believe we're talking about this. It, it seems weird, happen. but that's good. Yes, it's very good. 5.07 on your Friday morning. And still ahead, Snap showing off some new augmented reality glasses. We're going to tell you how they work. A special challenge, great graduate story. Even though she lost her mom along the way, how this amazing story Student. Staying motivated, change the world as a speech pathologist. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're in the upper 60s now, and it kind of feels that way. A little more humid than it was yesterday. We're going to check in with Mike later on. Going to top college is tough for many students. Then you throw in working full time, a pandemic, losing a loved one, and it can seem downright impossible. But it was through those obstacles that Sam Parisi found the strength to pursue her dream. Steve Spreester shares her story in today's College Great Graduate series. It was really hard this past year, but everything I've done is for her. And I'm really happy for that because I feel like she is watching down on me and cheering me on every step of the way. That's Xavier Anna Samantha Parisi, better known as Sam. At just 22 years old, she's a first generation student graduating with a bachelor's in communication sciences and disorders from Our Lady of the Lake University. She's excelled in and outside of school. But as you just heard, this past year has been pretty tough. Right before the pandemic hit last February, Sam lost her number one supporter, her mother. She was an amazing supporter of me. She was like my number one go-to cheerleader. Um, she really wanted me to graduate and do more. So she did just that. Sam worked tirelessly to make her mom proud, Smiling taking on a full time. load of classes for speech pathology, working full time, and completing 200 hours of research. Sam says her interest first sparked at age 10 when a speech specialist was called to her home to work with her two younger sisters. Sam says seeing them make progress firsthand, an amazing experience, and it's what inspired her to do the same for others. Well, she's um, just the 
the epiphany of what we would want to see in a speech language pathologist. Dr. Patty Solomon Rice has been a big part of Sam's life while at Our Lady of the Lake. She says Sam is the kind of student who wants to be the best. It was really easy to be Sam's mentor because sometimes you have to pull and pull and pull to um, help your students reach uh, as much potential as possible. But uh, Sam did not need to be pulled at all. Sam is now looking forward to starting a prestigious master's program this summer. <laughs> like, I couldn't be happier and more overjoyed because it's my next big chapter. Steve Spreester, KSAT 12. Nice to meet you, Sam Parisi. And we have more great grad stories still to come. Yes, we do. Congrats to Sam and good luck on your next chapter. 5.13 on your Friday morning. We're in the upper 60s right now. And still had details on a partnership between the White House and popular dating apps that meant to encourage people to get vaccinated. And while the trend for most stories is to go online, Google taking a step back and opening their first physical location. From prom dresses to workouts and new adventures, you hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. Do lotion and jeans go together? A Nivea breathable experiment. Now they do. Moisturizes deeply with no sticky feel. The game-changing Nivea breathable. Make fitness routine with pure protein. High protein, low sugar. Tastes great. High protein, low sugar. So good. High protein, low sugar. Mmm, birthday cake. Try pure protein shakes with vitamins and minerals for immune support. 516, the White House announcing a partnership with a major dating app to encourage vaccinations. ABC's Moto Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the new effort to get more younger Americans vaccinated. The largest dating apps are partnering with the White House, offering badges to show vaccination status. They're also offering free premium content and filters for vaccinated users. Coming this summer, Google is opening its first physical retail store here in New York City. The store will sell Pixel phones, Fitbit wearables, Pixel books, Nest products, and more. It's set to be located in the same Chelsea neighborhood as the company's headquarters. Finally, Snap has revealed the new version of its spectacle sunglasses. They allow users to see computer-generated imagery overlaid on their real-world field of view. Right now, they're only being given to a small number of creators for experimental purposes. Look at that. You can now create your own reality. Those are your Tech Bites. Make sure you have a great day and a great weekend as well. He's like a busy travel agent over there. We're talking about uh, Stephen Cavazos. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen. I saw something on I-10 and Callahan. Yeah, it looks like this just came up on TransGuide, Mark and Steph. We're going to keep a close eye on this. So this just popped up. We're going to have to take a dive in to see how this is going to be impacting drivers' commute on this Friday morning. But we did have that crash that we mentioned to you here. Uh, this was actually happening right on Highway 90. It looks like in the westbound lanes at right at Callahan Road. It doesn't appear that it's impacting traffic in that direction, but it's right west of 151. So that's what we were seeing a little bit earlier when we last uh, saw you guys. Now that crash that did happen out here at W White, W W White does seem to have cleared. There was a slowdown there, but traffic is improving. You can see there 41 miles per hour right near East South Cross Boulevard. So that's some good news if you're heading in that direction this morning. I'll look here at Transguide one last time here at I-10 in Callahan. I'm going to move out of the way so we can see those first responders. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to give those first responders plenty of room to get that scene clear. But again, we're going to be keeping tabs throughout the morning and find out what's going on for this Friday morning. Thank you, Stephen. That's a nice picture back there. <laughs> Is that Aruba or somewhere in the Caribbean, Mike? No, it's Cat Springs there. Yeah, Mr. Gorgeous Sunsets and uh, when you got that view in the foreground as well, I mean, a bad looking sunset. Almost looks like a uh, one of those ads for um, is it Dos Equis? Oh, yeah, or yeah. Corona, Corona with the palm they, trees. Yeah, 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 Corona off in the distance. Very there. nice.
Anyway, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, got some clouds hanging around this morning. Noticeable more humidity when you step outside. It started to come up yesterday afternoon, and it is definitely sticking around. And we do have uh, some places where there's a little bit more fog. Down around Catula, a mile and a quarter of visibility right now. Hondo, four, five New Braunfels, and then it gets really thick up around Austin. So once again, we're going to have to watch out for some fog around the area this morning. And the humidity, which, you know, this time yesterday, it was pretty comfortable out there, but that's just a little treat this time of year because we're usually on the humid side. It's going to be staying on the humid side with two points getting back up into the upper 60s, low 70s. Uh, we'll have higher humidities in the morning. It drops a little bit in the afternoon, kind of our usual cycle, but still going to be really humid and that's going to be the situation into tomorrow as well. And as that comes back in here, you know, you, you get uh, almost too much than the atmosphere can hold, and so we'll have a couple of sprinkly showers around the area. There is the chance for a couple of showers around later on this afternoon. Now, and again, this model tends to kind of broad brush things, but still a couple of showers, a little sprinkles here and there, maybe some fog tomorrow morning, and one or two showers throughout the afternoon. It's not going to be a washout. If you have outdoor plans, I wouldn't change them, but just be prepared in case something does happen to pop up uh, again sort of a broad brush, but a few showers around on Sunday, and I think maybe a little bit better chance for some rain around here on Sunday, even into Monday, and we'll still keep a small chance of rain around even going into the middle part of next week. Now, satellite picture right now, and you can see we're starting to see more cloudiness, more uh, moisture coming on in here from the Gulf of Mexico, and it's being pumped in by this low, which is kind of sitting out here, and good rain producer out in the middle of the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And this will, it, that's not in itself really going to start or bring the showers around here, but it is, like I said, going to be the big moisture pump. And that thing's going to be sticking around for the next couple of days and not really going anywhere. And that combined with this high here, and it's just sort of stuck in place right now. And that'll be the situation in through most of the weekend. And even going into next week, we're still going to have little disturbances hanging around here. So that's why we keep that small chance of rain around even into the uh, kind of the middle part of next week. So 80 today at noon, sunshine and clouds mixed together. 85 will still be slightly below normal. Humidity is going to make it feel every bit of 85 degrees and maybe then some. A shower or two is going to be possible today, maybe a thunderstorm. A little bit better chance over the weekend. Temperatures stay in the low 80s, some extra cloud cover around here. And uh, rain chances, again, not fantastic next week, but one or two of those afternoon showers. And then we're going to start to get back into where we should be. <laughs> what, what we're Upper used 80s. to. Yeah. I don't know if we're used to it, but what, well. the, what the all the data says was the average temperature right around upper 80s next week. So. The back to reality tour 2021. Uh. Yep. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> right now it is 522, about 68 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, a famous trio returns for Hocus Pocus 2, plus a first look at a special 1971 music documentary. Today's entertainment news takes us back to the 90s and even the 70s. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in the Hollywood Minute. A magical reunion is in the works. Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy Najimy are set to return as the Sanderson sisters in Hocus Pocus 2, a sequel to the 1993 cult classic. Disney Plus plans to premiere the movie next year. 1971, I don't think the music was a reflection of the times as much as the music also caused the times. Here's a look at 1971, the year that music changed everything. The documentary series looks at a year of musical innovation that fueled and was fueled by the political and cultural upheaval of the era. All eight episodes are now available on Apple TV+. I've been standing strong with the young people at Covenant House for well over 30 years. Stand with us. The stars came out for Covenant House this week. Dozens of performers and other celebs took part in Night of Covenant House Stars, a fundraiser for the charity that provides housing, health care, food and more for homeless young people and trafficking survivors in 31 cities. You can stream the show on Amazon Prime, YouTube, Facebook or at CovenantHouse.org. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now is 526 and we're at about 68 degrees right now. Starting your day with us. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. U.S. reporting some of the lowest COVID numbers in nearly a year, but vaccination rates have slowed down nationwide. We'll tell you which states are offering cash prizes to encourage people to get the shots. 
Plus why weather forecasters say this year's hurricane season may be similar to last year's. And get ready for a new challenger in the chicken sandwich wars. But it's not what you think. It's Pringles. I'll tell you we can get a hold of this tasty treat. And ahead on GMSA at 6, a massive fire rips through a cabin at a historical site in Indiana. Look at that video. More to come. Making headlines this morning, U.S. moving in the right direction as our country sees the lowest number of COVID cases in a year. This northeast side highway has turned out to be a path to trouble for one man. He's accused of leading deputies on a chase. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting in the upper 60s, a little more humid this morning than it was yesterday, so things to get used to, I think. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, May 21st. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Mike, I was talking to Mark earlier of how I was enjoying a little bit of the break in the rain, and then yesterday I felt like summer came back. It, yeah, basically because the sun came out, which was nice to see. A little more sunshine, I think, than expected, but also we started off with the low humidity yesterday morning, and by the afternoon that started to return as well. So. Yeah, it was uh, pretty summery out there, even though it was a pretty day. This morning we are starting off, as you can see, with plenty of clouds out there. And that's the normal high temperature, the average high temperature, or low temperature, pardon me, I wish it was a high temperature, uh, 68 degrees. And this number was down in the 50s yesterday, the dew points, and now it's back up into the, the mid-60s. Not much of a breeze out there. When you have that combination, you can get some uh, fog to develop. We do have some around Pleasanton now, mile and three quarters visibility, New Braunfels 5, 5, Castroville, and four miles visibility at Hondo and a lot of fog up around Austin, Catula, and so those are some of the, the thickest spots there. So it's very patchy, but just kind of watch out for some of this and it'll be sticking around, uh, it, especially if we get any clear spots in the, you know, any of these clouds to clear out a little bit, that may help with some of the fog throughout the next couple of hours. Mold's on the high side, but it did come down a lot from the previous day's reading when it was very high. Mixture of sunshine and clouds uh, throughout the day. A shower too is possible. Um, don't get all worried about that for anything outdoor today. Just don't be surprised if one pops up, but they're going to, I think you'll count them on one hand today. A little bit better chance for some rain over the weekend. Not a washout though. Outdoor plans, fine. Just have an umbrella handy. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. And Mr. Cavazos, what you got going on out there? Hey, thanks, Mike. Well, we did have a stall out in those eastbound lanes uh, at I-10 near Callahan, but that does seem to have cleared. Over here on Transguide, things are looking pretty smooth for this Friday morning. Uh, this is here at 410 near South 151. You can see traffic moving nice and smooth and picking up as the morning is progressing right now. Uh, we did have a crash, and it looks like that also just cleared here on 90 West at Callahan Road. That crash had been there for a little while, but it didn't look like it was impacting any major commutes uh, going Going out of coming out of San Antonio or going back into anywhere like Castroville. But if you're coming in from Castroville, do expect about a 19 minute commute on Highway 90 to downtown San Antonio. We also got a, about a 24 minute commute if you're coming in from Bernie on I-10 and a 28 minute commute from Bolverde on 281 to downtown San Antonio. We're going to have more on keeping a very close eye here in the traffic lab coming up. Mark Seth. Thank you, Stephen. One driver's future may have taken a big turn on a northeast side highway. Bear County deputies believe that man was intoxicated when he led them on a dangerous chase overnight. Katrina Weber is in the area where it started near Interstate 35 and Walsham Road with a live report. Now, Katrina, we understand the deputies say he caused some damage along the way. Well, that's right. They said that he did hit a guardrail on the highway and also had some close calls with other drivers, cutting them off along the road. Now, that was they first uh, caught saw his uh, he first caught their attention rather uh, here at I-35 and Walsham earlier this morning, around one o'clock. In fact, uh, by the time deputies caught up with him, he had made it all the way home on the other side of town. Deputies say they tried to pull over the man who's in his 30s and believed to have been intoxicated. Instead, they say he led them on a chase down I-35 to Loop 410. They did lose him for a while after he exited at San Pedro Avenue, but deputies say it wasn't long before they found him again, running a red light in the area of Vance Jackson and Cherry Ridge. And they quickly moved in and arrested him when he pulled into his own driveway in that area. That man now faces several charges. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. 534, the average daily number of new COVID cases in the U.S. is down to its lowest in nearly a year. But vaccination rates have slowed down, so some states have created vaccination lotteries to entice people to get the shot. CNN's Melissa Rainey has the details. This week, some decidedly good news on the pandemic front. For the first time since the pandemic began, COVID cases were down in all 50 states. That's since changed. Four states have inched up in the seven-day average of new cases, but it's some much-needed good news. If you think about this time last year, when we were looking into a pandemic that was getting worse and worse, more cases, more hospitalizations, more deaths, and we didn't really have a way to, to fight the virus. But now, thankfully, we have not won but three vaccines that have proven to be highly effective. But with that bit of good news comes the fact that fewer Americans are getting vaccinated. According to CDC data published Thursday, the average daily pace of coronavirus vaccinations is down nearly 50 percent from its peak in April. Almost 127 million people are fully vaccinated. That's 38 percent of the population. We are in the middle of the worst pandemic in a century. We actually have a ticket out. And the fact that we're fighting these things is incredibly frustrating uh, because we're fighting ourselves. We're not just fighting the virus anymore. In some states, the ticket to getting people vaccinated, cash. New York, Ohio and Maryland are all offering lottery drawings for people who get the COVID-19 shot. That's 40 drawings over 40 days for the chance to win 40,000 each day. Leaders in Ohio say the state is already seeing results with the Vax-A-Million campaign increasing vaccination rates by 28 percent since it was announced on May 13th. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. The CDC investigating outbreaks of salmonella in multiple states. Contact with backyard poultry could be to blame. Various state public health officials also investigating. According to the CDC, 163 people have been sickened in at least 43 states. No deaths have been reported, but 34 people have been hospitalized. CDC is urging people to know the risks of keeping live poultry and familiarize themselves with simple measures to stay healthy. A new first for Apple CEO Tim Cook, an appearance in federal court. Cook will be the star witness today in the Fortnite antitrust lawsuit. Epic Games, the owner of the popular game, filed the lawsuit last year after Apple dropped Fortnite from its app store. Apple removed the game after it says Epic created its own digital payment system, which Apple does not allow. Cook's testimony is likely to set the tone for Apple's fight against the growing antitrust pressure it is facing. Others, like Spotify and Match Group, accuse Apple of being anti-competitive. 537, upper 60s. And still ahead, Southwest Airlines will resume selling alcohol and coffee on its flights. We're going to tell you when. And get ready for another above average hurricane season. Why forecasters say this year may be similar to last year's historic season. And taking a look outside with live cam, no crazy weather in the area right now, but we are humid and we are about 68 degrees. We'll be right back. 2020 was a historic hurricane season with dozens of storms making landfalls. Now weather experts predict what's to come this year as hurricane season rapidly approaches. CNN's Daryl Forges has the latest. Hurricane season is upon us yet again. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, predicting what's to come this year. There is a 60% chance of an above normal season, a 30% chance of a near normal season, and a 10% chance of a below normal season. NOAA also is expecting 13 to 20 named storms this season. Out of those, six to 10 will become hurricanes with top winds of at least 74 miles per hour. We could also see three to five major hurricanes with wind speeds of at least 111 miles per hour. If you're in a hurricane zone, now is the time to ensure that you have an evacuation place uh, plan in place, disaster supplies on hand, and a plan to secure your home quickly. The biggest concern for weather experts is the toll the COVID-19 pandemic puts state and local governments through and how that could impact the resources heading into this hurricane season. One of our goals right now is to make sure that our staff here at FEMA are rested and reset and ready for hurricane season. The 2020 hurricane season saw a record-breaking 30 named storms. 12 May landfall, causing billions of dollars in damage. Even though the season officially starts June 1st, storms could get going early, as a weather system in the Atlantic could turn into a named storm by the weekend. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. 
And time now is 541 and about 68 degrees right now. Ready to get rid of the extra pounds put on during the pandemic. Up next, we're checking out some easy exercises that can help and what you need to remember before getting back in the gym. 544, now that many COVID restrictions are being lifted, more and more people looking to get their bodies back in shape. Erica Hernandez has some advice from fitness experts who say there are some things you need to remember before getting back on the treadmill. The last year has been a tough one when it comes to our bodies and health. So if you're getting motivated to get back into the gym, sports medicine doctors with the Cleveland Clinic say there's several things you need to remember. First, if you have recovered from COVID-19, returning back to sports and exercise can be a slow and sometimes frustrating process. So whether you're just walking down the street, hitting the treadmill, or picking up some weights again, doctors say take it easy. The Cleveland Clinic says don't try to power through like you used to do. It's recommended you follow a gradual progression and build up the time and intensity of your workouts. So start small, like with a slow walk, and then gradually increase if it feels okay. It may take a couple of weeks to work back up to the basic level you were at before the pandemic. Next, make sure to be patient with your body. Even if you were a marathon runner, you still need to be cautious and don't push your body too hard, too fast. Finally, keep in mind that getting back into shape is more than just exercising. Sports medicine doctors say you also need to get a proper amount of rest, drink plenty of water, eat good food, and follow advice by healthcare professionals. Fitness professionals say some of the easiest exercises are like jogging, using light weights, and possibly even joining a fitness class if one is available to keep you in a good routine. And since everyone is different, always talk to your own health professionals to get the best ways you can get your own body back into shape. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, Southwest Airlines will resume selling alcohol on flights this June. USA Today reports it's starting with flights between the continental U.S. and Hawaii on June 24th. Beer and wine will be on the menu for those journeys. And flights for more than 251 miles will have those drinks available starting July 14th. Vodka and whiskey will be on sale then also. The carrier hasn't been offering coffee either. That will change June 24th. Tesla CEO Elon Musk says the company's Model S is coming back. In a tweet, he announced a delivery event on June 3rd. The company says the shortage of computer chips and a redesign caused the delay. Musk says the new version will go from 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds, people. Wow. Model S is a luxury sedan. The company has been focused on building lower-priced vehicles. All right, ready for this? Move over, Popeyes, step aside, Chick-fil-A. Really? Get ready for a new challenger in the chicken sandwich wars. It's Kellogg's, but no, thankfully, it's not breakfast cereal. Kellogg's also owns Pringles, and it's adding that flavor with an extra spicy kick in partnership with Wendy's to promote its spicy chicken sandwich. The new chips will only be available for a limited time starting in June, and people who buy a can will also get a code for a free spicy chicken sandwich. Heck yeah, I'm there. That sounds great. Oh, oh yeah, why not? And I would like maybe save the chips for the sandwich mm -hmm. or get extra chips to have chips then and, and chips with the there sandwich, There you go. Right? Spicy <laughs> on top of spicy. <laughs> Steven, I know you would try it. I don't know why you guys always have to bring up food before you toss it. It gets me going here, uh, but I'm waiting for them to do maybe a PB uh, style chip. That could be pretty good. I don't know. I don't uh, know. <laughs> hey, but you know what? Things are looking pretty good for this Friday morning around the city. Nothing too major to report right now. We got some views here at Transguide to show you that traffic is obviously picking up as the morning is getting going here at 35 at Evans Road. You can see all our early commuters. Just be sure to take it slow. Don't be in a rush to go anywhere, but uh, things again are looking smooth right now. Now, uh, if you're going to be heading out here, and getting out of town maybe or need to fuel up. Let's take a look at our gas prices right now. This is the average gas price in Bear County, 266. And over here in Texas around the state, we're seeing about 275, but a U.S. average about 304 right now. We know it's been a big talking point over the last few weeks, but uh, right now it looks like it's a little bit steady compared to previous weeks where we saw it go up. But uh, just in case you need to fuel up before heading out on any major road trips or just maybe heading down to get some groceries. See, there you go, talking about food again. So, no, I see it um, <laughs> You know, when you think about Pringles, though, the flavors are good, but nothing like the originals. Yeah. You mean plain? I'm an OG yeah. kind of guy. Hmm? Those, I mean, those are just, it's, mm, you yeah. know. 
They have, and you know what? They do pretty good on the on the flavors. I tried the baked loaded baked potato. <laughs> that one. one's great. It literally mm -hmm. tastes like a loaded yeah. baked potato. And yes, so the ranch is, is good too. Here for that. Mm -hmm. so. I can't believe you didn't segue into moon pies with that potato. <laughs> 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 it is a waxing gibbous moon approaching the full moon, which is going to be on the 26th, and nice view of that man. You got a good camera lens on there, and uh, craving Swiss cheese right now. But I'm bumped. And it's going to be one of the uh, super moons coming up here, too, because the moon is at uh, when it's full on the 26th, it's going to be at the uh, closest point in its orbit around the Earth. All right, got a lot of clouds starting off this morning, a lot of humidity out there. Yesterday, we did hit 85 degrees, made it into the low 90s there along the uh, Rio Grande. About the same situation again today. Probably have a few more clouds hanging around here today uh, than what we had yesterday, and that small chance for a shower or two. But we've got obviously a much, much warmer start. We're almost 10 degrees warmer starting off this morning than what we were yesterday, and we dropped down into the 50s. So mid 80s all around the metropolitan area this morning. Leon Springs about 84. And, uh, and like I said, a shower or two is going to be possible today. Not very likely. We just have all this moisture, obviously the humidity in here and more moisture is going to continue to pump on in. So just one or two of them kind of scattered about the area. And tomorrow morning, same situation, a couple of showers, um, even down to a thunderstorm or two. But even throughout the morning, there's going to be a couple of showers scattered about here and there and going into the afternoon hours tomorrow. Perhaps a little bit better chance for some rain on Sunday. Still, the weekend's not going to be a washout. You got to get your grass cut. Uh, you can you know, get that in there as well. Some outdoor plans. There's a lot of graduations, commencements going on this weekend. It's just going to be very warm, very humid and have an umbrella handy just to be on the the safe side. All right, here's what's going on with the satellite picture and uh, you can see all this thicker cloud cover, which is coming in here to the east of us, and that's all being pumped in by a low, which is out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, there is the Hurricane Center kind of has their eye on it, saying it may turn into something about a 20% chance, which means it's not very likely at all, even over the next week, that, that would develop into anything tropical. But it is going to be a good moisture pump for us, and that's going to help with some of these showers. So that's pretty much going to be sitting there. It's almost stuck in place between that high and that low. So that's what's going to keep all the moisture coming on in here. Little disturbances, and that'll give us those rain chances. And even into the about middle part of next week, we'll keep a couple of rain chances around 80 today at noon sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds today and then later on this afternoon partly cloudy skies mid 80s actually below normal a shower or two is going to be possible it is going to be humid today it's going to be very humid over the weekend and we'll continue to have at least a uh, a chance for some rain a little bit better shot maybe on Sunday into Monday and then just one or two of them in the afternoon middle of next week and back to the upper 80s I'm interested once you're going to be saying with that look on your face. Uh-oh. You look. Oh, you look like you had something to say. I, I do. What? <laughs> when you're done, I'm just listening. Oh, okay. I was going to say, coming up today on SA Live oh. at 1 o'clock. Yes. <laughs> you guys are interviewing a guy I grew up with over in Universal City. Oh, seriously? Jason Eccles. Oh, yeah. we're childhood Small friends. World. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't see. Either. I knew it was going to be something profound you had to say. By that little <laughs> well, I wouldn't say profound, but well, that's what true, he's but doing is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. and he's trained uh, some form of spurs, and so we're going to try some uh, kickboxing with him. I didn't. So if we said, "Hey, Mark says hi," he he won't say who. He he won't. <laughs> <laughs> he will not. He will not say who. I promise. Oh, uh, grew up cool. with uh, Jason and his brother Jeff out there in UC. When have uh, you ever been kickboxing? No, he's invited me a bunch of times, but I haven't gone out there yet. <laughs> well, but now's the time to the take it up. It, I wouldn't go either. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely a workout. But that's uh, more of that coming up on Eccles Fitness coming up today on SA Live at one o'clock. Right now it's five fifty-three. You got to come down to the show. You should, Mark. One of the most popular sci-fi franchises in the video game world has received a 4K upgrade. Up next, we're going to get a new look at the Mass Effect series.
Mass Effect Trilogy gets a mass upgrade in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. What it does is it collects Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, and all of the DLC, all of the extra weaponry, all of the story threads that were put into the original three classic games that originated in 2007, and they've all been modernized and uh, up uh, to Ultra HD resolutions, 4K resolutions. Why is it that whenever someone says, with all due respect, they really mean kiss my But the core stories of those original three sci-fi juggernauts are all intact, and there's a reason why Mass Effect is at the top of many role-playing gamers' yeah. favorites out there. This is an amazing franchise. You humans have a saying, an eye for an eye, a life for a life. The decisions players make during the game affect the story throughout the Space Opera trilogy. It's a truly non-binary type of experience, you know? You, I, And that's one of the beautiful things about the storytelling in Mass Effect. It's really about, uh, y you know, syncing up with the characters and getting to know them at their core and not judging books by their covers. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead in our next hour at GMSA, we'll meet a young woman from UTSA who hopes to bring a game-changing device to our roadways. Samuel King will have her story. Plus, we'll be joined live with a pediatric sleep specialist. She has some helpful information about your kids and their sleep patterns. We also have a couple of viewer questions that you have submitted on the KSAT Facebook page. And after the break, an overnight chase sends deputies after a drunk driver where they caught up with him in our next hour. As we end this one, a quick look at Trans Guide as Samuel King has now stepped into the studio. We'll check in with him at the top of the hour. More to come right here on GMSA. This morning, Bear County deputies, uh, rather, uh, this morning a drunk driver leads Bear County Sheriff's deputies on an overnight chase. Details still ahead. Taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are now at 67 degrees, uh, still humid out there and expecting some rain this weekend. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday, May 21st. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And we have some time to grab some coffee and, you know, start off to a good weekend, I think. This time yesterday morning, we were enjoying unusually cool temperatures, but then it really heated up. It got summer-like in the afternoon. What about today, Mike Osterhage? Summer-like. Summer-like. Yes, and uh, we will have some sunshine later on today. Maybe a shower. I wouldn't really, and even over the weekend, yeah, there are going to be a couple of showers Here out there. there. It's not going to be a washout or anything like that, but just, uh, just don't be surprised by one. Keep an umbrella handy, and oh, the screen is black. Hmm. Oh, no. What is going on here? Hmm, that's interesting. Anyway, what I can tell you is we do have a little bit of fog out there with some of this humidity and uh, Casterville at four miles, five miles visibility in New Braunfels. Pleasanton has improved. It was down about a mile and a quarter, but it has now come up, although a lot of fog up there around Austin and well, keep some of these uh, low clouds and fog around this morning. Molds on the high side and throughout the rest of today, we are going to see temperatures. You would see a lot of cute little numbers popping up there, but we're having some technical difficulties right now. So what I can tell you is we'll be in the uh, mid 80s later on today and which is still a little bit on the, the low side compared to normal and a one or two showers out there. Maybe a slightly better chance of rain over the weekend, but it's definitely going to be on the humid side. Nice thing is roads are dry right now. And as we transition traffic authority, Samuel King is here. Good morning, sir. Anything big going on? Good uh, morning, Mike. I guess they didn't want to see deal with any more rain coming up this weekend. It's tired of the rain. Weather computer is just done. But right now, traffic-wise, things looking okay, especially in the immediate San Antonio area. You had some issues uh, earlier this morning, but at the moment, things look relatively fine if you need to start getting your day going out and about around the area. But up here in Comal County, north of New Braunfels, we do have some slowdowns here on 35 southbound, down to 12 miles per hour uh, near Watson Lane here, both west and east. So that's something to keep in mind if you're someone who lives north of New Braunfels this morning, you need to commute on 35. Once you get past New Braunfels, things are smooth sailing on 35 into downtown, 25 minutes, 27 minutes coming in on 281 this morning, 24 minutes coming in from Bernie on I-10. And once you get downtown, this is what you'll see, 35 at St. Mary's flowing well this morning. We'll have another update coming up. New this morning, Bear County Sheriff's Office says a drunk driver led deputies on a chase overnight. Miss started around one this morning near Loop 410 in San Pedro near North Star Mall. 
BCSO says a man in his 30s failed to stop after he was seen cutting off another driver and hitting the guardrail. Deputies initially lost him, but he was then seen running a red light at Vance Jackson and Cherry Ridge. BCSO was eventually able to catch up with him as he pulled into his own driveway where he was taken into custody. To the latest on the vaccine rollout, we're getting close to a major milestone. More than 995,000 people have at least one dose of vaccine in Bear County. That number expected to hit 1 million by Monday. When it comes to full vaccinations, 44.6% of people 12 and up have both doses of that vaccine. As we continue to see a drop in the average number of COVID cases, the seven day rolling average now 138 cases per day. One new death being reported and 154 COVID patients are still in San Antonio hospitals. Rural school districts are wrapping up a very different year than what they started with. Somerset ISD officials are reporting about 83% of their students are back in the classroom and they started with about 38%. The district superintendent says in person learning is best for students. The students who were learning virtually uh, initially were struggling. We had about 70% failure rate of all students who were learning online. The superintendent says with the help of community labs, along with testing being available, a lot of families felt comfortable sending their kids back. The district says that their highest positive numbers happened following the winter break when 54 people tested positive. But they've had pretty low numbers for about three months. Now the push is for drives to get all kids 12 and up vaccinated. U.S. economy and a growing challenge uh, from the as we recover from the pandemic. First, the good news for the first time since last June, we're seeing fewer than 30,000 new COVID cases each day in the U.S. But the bad news vaccination rates are slowing down quite a bit. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, a new push to get people back to work with cash. As COVID cases drop sharply and more restrictions are lifted, many businesses are facing a new problem. They say unemployment benefits from the federal government are working against them. Well, some people are looking for work and some people are not. In response, Colorado is now offering people up to $1,600 to forego unemployment benefits and return to work full time. Connecticut and Arizona are also planning to give out bonuses to people who go back to work. It comes as more states offer cash prizes to get more people vaccinated. In New York City, the governor announced lottery scratch tickets for people who are vaccinated with a $5 million top prize. Everybody wins. You have a one in nine chance of winning the lottery, uh, but you get the vaccine and you win. And vaccinated people in Maryland now have a chance to win $40,000 every day for 40 days with a grand prize of $400,000. Go out and get vaccinated for your chance to win a share of this $2 million. In West Virginia, people 16 to 35 who get the shot can now register for a $100 savings bond or gift card. President Biden has set a new goal of getting 70% of adults vaccinated with at least one shot by July 4th. But now that percentage is still under 50% and vaccination rates are slowing down. Meanwhile, the American Federation of Teachers has sent a new letter to the CDC seeking clarity on the agent's mask guidelines, which are causing confusion. The union of 1.7 million teachers asking several questions, including what to do in facilities mixed with students who are eligible for the vaccine and those who are not. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. To Japan, where hospitals in Osaka, about an hour and a half away from Tokyo, are seeing a surge in coronavirus patients. Olympic organizers and government officials insist the Olympics will be safe, but medical experts say they're worried about what could happen to the rest of Japan if the crisis worsens during the July Games. As of this morning, the Olympics will happen as scheduled. Right now on KSAT.com, we have an article about the current situation in Osaka and what experts are saying about the risks of pushing ahead with the Summer Games. Back here at home at 607, a recent UTSA graduate is hoping to one day bring a product to market that could help make our roads safer. It's a device that detects fatigue in drivers. Our Samuel King joins us again. And Samuel, we understand this idea has actually won awards for the student and her team. Yeah, Mark and Stephanie, the device idea won UTSA's routing tank competition back in 2019. And the prototype itself placed second in UTSA Technology Venture Startup Competition. The top prize there is worth $100,000. Cecilia Flores, she's from East Texas and is a first generation college graduate. She is co-founder of Mecham Medical, Mecham standing for 
making every customer matter. The device works by using machine learning to continuously monitor a driver for fatigue. If fatigue is detected, a dispatcher is notified. Now, the idea was sparked after the brother of one of her classmates was involved in a serious crash after falling asleep. Laura says the team later decided to focus on commercial drivers who took on extra work meeting demands for deliveries during the COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone else was at home, but who had to be working delivering everything? It was the commercial transportation drivers. You know, they were doing extra time. We did some research, found out their deliveries were three times their normal rate, and their shifts were stretching up to 13 hours. <laughs> And Flores says the device is a little more advanced than some others currently on the market. The Macam device uses multiple inputs, such as muscle movements and eye movements, to detect fatigue. To, to detect fatigue. Tongue twister there. She's still working on perfecting the idea and hopes someone will pick it up soon. And she says her experience at UTSA shows you don't have to go to the Ivy League schools or Stanford to make connections in the startup world. Mark, Stephanie? Thank, thank you. Thank you, Samuel. 609, we're about 67 degrees. And ahead on GMSA, our great graduate series continues with a young woman who's not only a first generation college student, but she's also triumphed over adversity. Steve Spreester will have her story. And the weekend is almost here. Mike says keep an umbrella handy just in case. If you have other plans, you can find out your forecast with Mike coming up. And welcome back. It's about 613. Going to college is tough for tough enough for many students and throwing working full time, a pandemic and losing a loved one. And it can seem impossible. It was through those obstacles that Sam Parisi found the strength to pursue her dream. Our Steve Spreester shares her story in today's college great graduates series. It was really hard this past year, but everything I've done is for her. And I'm really happy for that because I feel like she is watching down on me and cheering me on every step of the way. That's Xavier Anna Samantha Parisi, better known as Sam. At just 22 years old, she's a first generation student graduating with a bachelor's in communication sciences and disorders from Our Lady of the Lake University. She's excelled in and outside of school, but as you just heard, this past year has been pretty tough. Right before the pandemic hit last February, Sam lost her number one supporter, her mother. She was an amazing supporter of me. She was like my number one go-to cheerleader. Um, she really wanted me to graduate and do more. So she did just that. Sam worked tirelessly to make her mom proud, Smiling taking on a full load of classes for speech pathology, working full time, and completing 200 hours of research. Sam says her interest first sparked at age 10 when a speech specialist was called to her home to work with her two younger sisters. Sam says seeing them make progress firsthand, an amazing experience, and it's what inspired her to do the same for others. Well, she's um, just the, uh, the epiphany of what we would want to see in a speech language pathologist. Dr. Patty Solomon Rice has been a big part of Sam's life while at Our Lady of the Lake. She says Sam is the kind of student who wants to be the best. It was really easy to be Sam's mentor because sometimes you have to pull and pull and pull to um, help your students reach uh, as much potential as possible. But uh, Sam did not need to be pulled at all. Sam is now looking forward to starting a prestigious master's program this summer. <laughs> like I couldn't be happier, more overjoyed because it's my next big chapter. Steve Spreester, KSAT 12. Good luck to you. Well, in morning sports, after losing their first two home games in a row, the San Antonio Missions finally got a win over the Frisco Rough Riders last night. The final from Wolf Stadium, 3-1. to one. Two teams play again tonight, starting at 7.05. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo has announced its educational commitment of $9 million for 2021. This year, the organization has helped educate over 12,000 students and since 1984, it has committed more than $232 million. The funds are raised through events like the annual Stock Show and Rodeo and are awarded in the form of scholarships and grants. The 2022 San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo will be held February 10th through the 27th. For more information, you can visit SA rodeo.com. 
Right now at 616, we're going to talk to Mike in just a moment. Just go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Thank you very much. We'll start with some uh, travel times to the south and west of San Antonio. 28 minutes if you're coming in on I-37 from the Pleasanton area. 19 minutes on Highway 90 from Cashville to downtown and 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle to downtown northbound on I-35. Take a look at the maps. Things still look fairly smooth in most of the area. Maybe a few delays here and there. We're still watching uh, this situation up in northern Comal County, north of New Braunfels, south of San Marcos. And this slowdown is greatly improving. It was down to like 12 miles per hour earlier now, down to 50 miles per hour. So our folks up there, uh, that commute is improving. So if we need to head out now would be a good time to do so because you never know when these delays might come back. Some weekend work scheduled here at Loop 1604 and I-10 East. The main lanes of I-10 will be affected as they do some work here tomorrow morning between 5 and noon uh, at that intersection there. So that's just something to watch out for. Also some 1604 construction next week had some overnight. Uh, they're not going to be doing weekend work on this project here around uh, Kyle Seal and Hausman Road, uh, but travel time's looking good right now. But again, this uh, work is going to be during the overnight hours during the week. No weekend work at 1604 yet, but that could be coming in the next couple months. We'll have more on that in the weeks to come. And here is a look at Transguide 90 at 36. Traffic flowing well this morning, guys. Not too bad right there. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, how's our weekend looking? Uh, pretty good. Uh, we will have you know, one or two showers here and there. It is going to be on the humid side, though, this weekend. More like what you would expect as we go in toward the latter days of May. This morning we're starting off in the upper 60s, which, yeah, it's a whole lot different than yesterday, but this is what we would usually expect this time of year. That's kind of the normal or the average low temperature, and there is a lot more humidity. We've got a lot of clouds out there. A couple of, uh, well, the sun's trying to squeeze through in a couple of places. 85 uh, for a high temperature later on today. You'll feel it with the humidity, and a shower or two is possible. Just a mention of it. It's not very likely, though. And, oh, darn, my picture didn't pop up there. It was a beautiful... Well, love the internet. Anyway, we've got a lot of uh, clouds hanging around here as of right now. And you may have seen this. The uh, National Hurricane Center came out with its forecast for this season's uh, hurricane outlook. And the average number of storms is 14. And they're going for about anywhere, you know, kind of a little span there, 13 to 20, about 16 or so, 17 maybe. And hurricanes would be 6 to 10. Average number being seven, so just a little bit above average. Same thing with major hurricanes, three to five, average number being three. And Colorado State University pretty much agrees with this. They went for four major hurricanes, eight uh, hurricanes, and about 16 name storms. So uh, National Hurricane Center as well as Colorado State University are pretty much on track as far as the hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. Now, this low down here, Hurricane Center is already starting to kind of just take a look at it, but when you have only 20% chance of any sort of development over five days, it's probably not going to turn into anything. It is, though, going to be and is a big moisture pump for us. It's pulling in all this moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. This is the, the clear sky that we had yesterday, all that blue sky, and moisture is going to continue to sort of invade the area, and that's going to not only help out with the humidity, but also with rain chances. We do have a couple of showers in the forecast today. Again, one or two of them. It's not going to be any big deal. Slightly better chance for some rain tomorrow. Uh, a few of those showers starting off in the morning and then here and there throughout the day. Just take an umbrella to be on the safe side. About a 30, maybe 40 percent chance for some rain. So not a great shot at any rain. It will definitely be on the warm and humid side, and that's going to be the situation going into Sunday as well. And next week, we'll still keep a couple of showers hanging around here. The afternoon showers popping up again, not any sort of rain out, and that's also the situation over the weekend. I don't think it's going to be any sort of a, a rain out 80 today at noon. Mixture of sunshine and clouds. High temperature today up to 85 and again, a shower and a storm here. or there. probably count them on one hand today. Tomorrow, a few uh, showers, a little bit of rain here and there. Not a big chance of it. Uh, maybe a slightly better chance. Oh, my computer's just going all over the place. It, Oh no, again there, it wants so. you to go back to school. It wants to go back to school, yes indeed. <laughs> anyway, what I can tell you though is temperatures will start to go up going into next week. We're still on the below normal side. We'll make it toward the upper 80s. I didn't touch the button, by the way. Uh, upper 80s by next week. That's Sam's good. messing with me over there. Ah. <laughs> Are you? Oh. oh. It's mine. Oh no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guilty party. This says weather. This says traffic. So, oh, okay. We have the same thing. Oh, so the same yeah. clickers. Uh, yeah. It's okay. So and here. the amazing thing is 12 garage doors just opened. <laughs> too, yeah. As well. Sorry, guys. Thank Sorry. you very much. Uh, right now, 621 on your unpredictable Friday morning. That's right. The world's largest search engine getting set to open its very first retail store. We have the details next. Like many people with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, I was there. Be right back. But my symptoms were keeping me from where I needed to be. So I talked to my doctor and learned Humira is for people who have UC or Crohn's disease. And Humira helps people achieve remission that can last, so you can experience few or no symptoms. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections, including tuberculosis and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for for you and them. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. In this morning's GMA First Look, the big chance of getting money for getting vaccinated. Governors across America pulling out all the stops to reach President Biden's goal of having 70% of adults vaccinated with one shot by July 4th. Ohio already seeing big results with their lottery since announcing prizes like a $1 million prize for adults and a full ride scholarship to any state university for kids 12 to 17. They've seen a 28% increase in their vaccination numbers. Now Maryland is catching the lottery fever. Get your shot for a shot to win. And in New York, Governor Cuomo offering scratch off tickets to those vaccinated that could be worth up to $5 million. Everybody wins. You have a one in nine chance of winning the lottery, uh, but you get the vaccine and you win. We'll have much more on these big vaccine incentives coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And coming this summer, Google is opening its first physical retail store in New York City. The store will sell Pixel phones, Fitbit wearables, Pixel books, Nest products, and more. It's said to be located in the same neighborhood as the company's headquarters. Snaps unveiled uh, the new version of its Spectacle smart glasses. They allow users to see computer-generated imagery overlaid on the real world's field of view. Right now, they're only being given away a small number of creators for experimentation purposes. I could not handle those glasses. No? No. What about, you look like you're ready for them. <laughs> sure, why yeah. not? Oh, Try no. them out, yeah. No, no, not me. You can tell me about it. Time now, 626 and 67 degrees right now. Head on GMSA, did you see this video yet? Unbelievable, a massive fire destroys a cabin at a historical site in the state of Indiana. And we're gonna have the latest on an overnight chase involving sheriff's deputies. And that happened right here in San Antonio. And looking at the roads with TransGuy, we'll check back in with Samuel. A man who refused to stop for Bear County deputies now going straight to jail. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Outside with live cam, the sun is coming up. It's very humid out there. And Mike says, don't put that umbrella away just yet. That's right. Be prepared. But for now, happy Friday. It's May 21st and a little humid out there. It is uh, not quite as pleasant as it was on our Thursday morning. Mike is here with more on that and kind of talk a little bit more about what to expect weather wise as we go into the weekend. It's finally here. Yay. Yes. Yeah. Yesterday was was a nice little treat. That was yes. sort of the not the way things are supposed to be. Right. And now, yeah, humidity. Well, it started to come back yesterday. You were even talking about how it felt. Yes, for summer. it really did. Sun came out and it warmed things up quite a bit. And you can sort of see all that humidity. Humidity is kind of hanging there in the skyline and we'd have temperatures that are now back where they 
what you would expect where they should be. If you will, 67 right now, dew points at 65 and not much of a breeze out there. And with these two numbers so close to each other, the relative humidity then is very, very high. And so that's why we do have some fog showing up in places. Hondo Castroville, New Braunfels, five miles visibility. And then look at those gray areas where fog is definitely getting thicker. Beeville, half mile. Fredericksburg has dropped down and Austin's just at a quarter mile. The Grange also has some uh, fairly thick fog and a little bit heading out there toward your Valley and Eagle Pass. So we'll just watch this over the next couple of hours to see if any more of this uh, fog gets any thicker. Be on the lookout for that, and then we'll have uh, partly cloudy skies later on today. Mold is on the high side, although it came down a lot from the previous day's reading. So call it mostly cloudy this morning, a little bit of patchy fog out there. Yeah, humidity is back. And then later on today, partly cloudy. I wouldn't really change any plans about this. A shower or two is possible today, and that's pretty much the situation over the weekend. A slightly better chance for some rain, shower or thunderstorm out there, but again, not a washout at all. Just keep an umbrella handy if you got any outdoor plans this weekend. And next week, we'll still have some rain hanging around here, and temperatures will start to warm up. Mid-80s today, and we'll drop down a little bit thanks to the cloud cover over the weekend, but it's back to the upper 80s. That's what we would expect for late May. That's going to be next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, anything big going on, sir? Nothing uh, too big going on. We are checking on a few uh, things that are just coming in. Some delays uh, on 35 approaching uh, 1604 in Southern Kamau County, south of New Braunfels. So we'll be checking on that coming up. Uh, also looking out here uh, to the west, 281 I-10, uh, say Highway 16, Bandera Road, all looking uh, fairly good at the moment, but some delays starting to develop there on 281. We'll keep an eye on that. Looking at your uh, travel times, up to 27 minutes coming in uh, from New Braunfels right now, 26 minutes coming in from Belverde and 281, 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. See these uh, delays starting to uh, develop there on 35, so we'll continue to watch that throughout the morning. And this is a Look at a 410 at San Pedro. We understand there might be a crash reported close by at 410 in Blanco. We'll check on that in our next update, which is coming up in just a bit. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Driving while intoxicated, just one of the charges a man will be facing after a chase along two local highways. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say he refused to stop and put other drivers in danger. This started on the northeast side of town near Interstate 35 and Walsham Road, and that's where we find our Katrina Weber with a live report. Now, Katrina, was anyone hurt? No, but deputies say he did have a couple of close calls as he cut off all the drivers on the highway. They say that is what first attracted their attention before one o'clock this morning. That man, they say, also hit a guardrail here on I-35. Now, by the time deputies caught up with him, that man who's in his 30s had made it all the way back home on the other side of town. Deputies arrested him in his own driveway. They say it appears he was intoxicated. Now, they initially tried to stop him on I-35 near Walsham, but they say he continued on to Loop 410, then lost them temporarily in the area of San Pedro Avenue. The deputies say they found him again after he ran a red light at Vance Jackson and Cherry Ridge, and then they followed him home where they did arrest him. And again, he does face several charges. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, a man waking up in jail following a road rage incident that ended with shots fired. It happened back in April on I-35 at O'Connor on the northeast side. According to the arrest affidavit, 25-year Marcos Valadez cut off another driver, then fired shots at the vehicle. The driver was not hit by the bullets. The affidavit says the driver caught the incident on a dash cam video. Valadez now faces a charge of deadly conduct with a firearm. And Fiesta's famous night in old San Antonio is keeping the pandemic in mind. Tickets are limited to reduce crowding and those tickets will only be sold online. Meanwhile, NIOSA is also following CDC guidance, meaning those who are fully vaccinated will not be required to wear masks, but those who do not have the vaccine are being asked to mask up. And be aware the event will use a cashless pay system. We have all those details as well as a link for NIOSA tickets on KSAT.com. A reminder, 900 doses of the Johnson & Johnson one-shot vaccine will be made available at a Fiesta-themed vaccination clinic this weekend. No appointment necessary and Fiesta medals will be handed out. The clinic's happening in the 2600 block of, uh, sorry, at 2600 
Plaza building on Southwest Military Drive. Okay, that's a little weird, but I think you get the gist of it. Happening from 9 in the morning to noon, that is tomorrow afternoon. Early voting begins on Monday for the upcoming runoff election, and there are several taking place, so voters will head back to the polls to decide races in districts 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9. Election Day is June 5th. We have all your election coverage right now on KSAT.com. Israel and Hamas have agreed to a ceasefire halting an 11-day war that left more than 200 people dead. The intense barrages from both sides over nearly two weeks were the worst since 2014. The United States, Israel's closest and most important ally, backed what it said was Israel's right to self-defense. President Biden said the U.S. was committed to helping Israel and to working with the internationally recognized Palestinian Authority, not Hamas, to provide humanitarian aid to Gaza. Clean up underway after a massive fire ripped through a cabin at a historical site in Indiana. Take a look at this video. You see the flames swallowing up that cabin. The structure was completely destroyed. No one was hurt. Now the side of the cabin was once home uh, to George Rogers Clark, an American Revolution, Revolutionary War hero. Oh, wow. That fire was massive. Time now is 637, about 67 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll be speaking with a pediatric sleep specialist. She's going to tell you everything you need to know about your kids and their sleeping habits. And welcome back. It's about 6.40 now. If you're a parent, you probably know that getting your kids to go to bed is not always an easy task. And how do you know if they're getting enough sleep? Joining us live now is Dr. Samia Ahmad. She's a pediatric neurologist and sleep medicine physician at Children's Hospital in San Antonio, Baylor College of Medicine. Good morning, Dr. Ahmad. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first off, has a pandemic changed the volume or type of sleep complaints you're seeing? That's a great question. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, it really has. Initially, what we saw was that there was a decrease in the volume. Uh, families were very scared to come to the office, um, and so we're just kind of um, you know, dealing with their sleep problems at home. Um, as we started getting uh, telehealth going, uh, we've seen the volumes come back, and the complaints are a lot about um, a lot of unstructured sleep. Kids going to bed very late at night, um, then having difficulty waking up in the morning and getting to class, uh, and because they've been so tired, they're taking naps when they're not supposed to, like mm -hmm. after school. Yes, and the children who've already had underlying mental health problems, we've seen exacerbation of their difficulty sleeping and maintaining sleep. Um, and before we would see um, a lot of uh, things like difficulty breathing in sleep, like obstructive sleep apnea and uh, snoring, uh, for that you have to do a test in the hospital. And we've seen that families have been a little bit more hesitant to get that done, so thereby that diagnosis has been more delayed. Dr. Ahmad, one of our viewers asked, uh, her name is Sandy, I can't get my 10 year old to sleep at decent hour. And he's always been what she calls a night crawler. And when we try to get him to bed earlier, he gets upset. Advice? Yes, very common complaint. And if you look at the age range, he's 10 years old. So Sandy, your your child is um, sort of becoming what we call delayed sleep phase. At this age, he wants to, his his body wants to go to bed later and wake up later in the morning. And to compound that, he's been a night owl all his life. That's different from someone who's a morning lark. And those are entrained um, uh, habits our body has very early in life. Um, so he gets upset. Um, so what you could try doing is like helping him um, get sleepy by dimming the lights. That'll help with the natural secretion of melatonin. So try doing that um, about an hour before bedtime. Find out when he gets sleepy and set that as his bedtime. And after he's falling asleep easily at that time, move the bedtime earlier by a little bit, just by about like 15 minutes every couple of days until you and your child can agree on uh, an appropriate bedtime. That sounds like a strategy. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And, and Dr. Ahmad, we had another viewer reach out. Her name is Grace, and she says, when my son turned two years old a few months ago, we noticed he started having nightmares, and it's like his imagination increased, and so did his nightmares. So what can we do to decrease the nighttime wakings due to the nightmares? Yes, Grace, that is common in that age group. You want to make sure that he's getting enough sleep. Um, so a two-year-old needs quite a bit of sleep. So, um, you know, anywhere in a 
range of like 12 hours, 11, 12, 13 hours. It really is a range. Um, and if he's really not getting, if he's getting enough sleep, you have to see what kind of quality sleep is he getting? Like, is he snoring? Is he kicking and moving in his sleep? If you've kind of made sure he's not having any of those difficulties in his sleep, you may want to kind of uh, try to talk to him like, um, hey, is everything okay? What happened in your dream? And you can kind of have him tell you about the dream, but then change the ending. Instead of it being scary, have him kind of draw it out that it's a happy scene. So uh, that's called like, um, you know, some, some those are some techniques we use to treat uh, nightmares. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Maud, you've been great this morning. We appreciate it. We'd really like to bring you back as we get closer to the end of the summer, as things get back to normal, and we get ready to go back to school. Would that be okay with you? Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. All right, Dr. Sumia Maud, local uh, sleep specialist, thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank you. We'll definitely need the advice in the future we as will. well. We'll get back with her right here mm -hmm. on GMSA. Right now, it's 645. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. I just looked on TransGuy. It looks like things are moving. Yeah, things are moving, but they are picking a little uh, up a little bit on uh, I-35 there. And we'll show you a little bit more about that coming up. But we are seeing some delays coming out of New Braunfels and in on the northeast side on 35. Uh, let's take a look here. This is 35 at FM 2552. We're seeing a bit of a slowdown down to 30 miles per hour there. So that's just something to keep in mind if your commute and it takes you that way. Also seeing some delays at 1604. So this is how that is affecting your travel time from New Braunfels into 410 that's down to 23 minutes uh, up to 23 minutes there your speed is down to 58 miles per hour 19 minutes going the other direction so that just gives you an idea of that delay and that's going to continue to build here over the next hour so that's something to keep in mind you might want to uh, wrap up things and uh, start getting ready to go uh, but wait a little minute maybe 10 more minutes so you can finish getting the news here on gmsa also taking a look at gas times uh, gas prices we've been tracking uh, these of course uh, mostly try to do it every week we're tracking a little more last week with the pipeline situation things have stabilized not seeing as many increases or 226 in Bear County, much lower than the state <coughs> average of 275 per gallon, 304 across the United States. So gas is still a little bit of a bargain here. And let's take a look at Transguide. We were mentioning I-35. This is I-35 at Evans. You see that southbound traffic starting to build this morning. Still flowing for now, but we're already seeing those delays starting to build, guys. Thank you, Sambo. Mike says, look up. Yep, we had beautiful blue skies yesterday. It was absolutely gorgeous out there and just so happens to be a C5 getting in the way of uh, somebody's picture right there. I'm doing a little training <laughs> mission, maybe a touch and go or two. That is nice from from Yvonne there. That's a nice picture. Jump seat. Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Just a, just a thought. If you, you know, you're fine the, with the, simulator time, too. The, yes. The, uh, no, I'm, I'm the real thing. I'm the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well ask, you know, all they can do is say no. Anyway, we've got a lot of uh, just that haze hanging around here right now and some clouds. You saw in some of those transguide cameras are not really there was a lot of cloudiness in the background. And yesterday, of course, as you saw, it was pretty good flying weather in the afternoon. We had all those blue skies. Here comes all the moisture and a lot of thicker clouds off to the east. And this is all being pumped in here because of uh, disturbance, kind of a low out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's just going to be kind of a a moisture pump, I guess, is the best way to put it. So it's going to sort of hang out here the next couple of days, feed all this moisture in, little disturbances, and that's what's going to give us some rain chances around here. And the humidity, which is high right now, is just going to be staying high all the way through the weekend and also going into next week. And with the extra humidity, again, little disturbances, not going to be anything like we had earlier on in the week. Now, it will be rainier further off to the east. Long range computer model, <clears throat> excuse me, and this one does tend to kind of, again, broad brush things. So, you know, we'll have a couple of showers around here, one or two of them tomorrow. It's not going to be raining constantly. It's just one of those, don't be surprised if there is a shower that's going to be popping up. A few of them throughout the day, shower, maybe a thunderstorm. Same thing on Sunday, and perhaps even a little bit better chance for some rain on Sunday, even going into Monday. Uh, just scattered about 30, 40% chance for some showers. And then we go into next, the latter, or excuse me, the middle part of next week. And even Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll still have just one or two showers around the area. Not a huge, huge rain chance. Also, as we go into next week, things are definitely going to start to uh, heat up. On the flip side of that, this is just, I mean, the anomaly out there, 25 degrees right now 
in Cutbank, Montana. So they're definitely not done with winter up there, but all that cool air is going to be staying up to the north. And so on the flip side of that, yeah, we are definitely going to warm up as we go into especially the mid to the latter part of next week. We're getting kind of spoiled here. We did make it up to 85 yesterday. We're going to be up to 85 again today. Again, a shower or two, um, perhaps a few more clouds than what we had hanging around here yesterday. And then over the weekend, more clouds. That'll help to keep temperatures down somewhat. Even into Monday, yeah, a little bit better chances of rain Sunday, Monday. And then uh, next week, we'll be back up into the mid to upper 80s. And, you know, you can't rule out a shower here and there in the afternoon and or a thunderstorm. I have a question for our producer real quick. Do you still want us to go over SA Live real quick? Okay, you good. Kickboxing. Yes. yes. With your buddy. <laughs> Jason Eccles. Mark yes. is ready. <laughs> he is going to teach us the basics. You know, and it's tough to do that because Fiona's a uh, black belt in, I think it's Taekwondo. Seriously? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. She oh, no kick wonder. your butt. You oh, yeah. You don't mess with Fiona. Oh, I know. I'm very afraid of her. Anyway, um, <laughs> just in, in general principle, too. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to learn about some, some kickboxing. I tried that one time, uh -huh. and the thing you got to remember is don't hit the bag with your toe. Oh, on the yeah. Because that really hurts when you hit it with your toe. Top I would imagine. Foot. Yeah. Top of your foot. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good, good luck with Fiona. The voice of experience. Jason's going to point toe. you in the right direction. If he can train Tim Duncan, he can get you up to speed and in fighting shape. You got this, Mike. <laughs> or maybe not. Or About 10 till 7 on your Friday morning. Glad you're with us. I'm Sarah Costa, and this is my dog, Scooby. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we visit the two new dog parks here in District 3, and we speak to Councilwoman Via Gran about her most cherished accomplishments. Aw, Sarah and Scooby. I haven't seen Scooby in a while. We see Sarah here, though, all the time. So we'll look forward to that tomorrow morning. Taking a look outside with Live Cam, we're in the humid 60s right now. We'll be right back. Coming up here on GMA, we've got the new hurricane outlook. We're right here on the Jersey Shore, the whole East Coast, so vulnerable as we know, and the Gulf Coast, and two areas that we're already watching. Still a week and a half away from the official start of hurricane season, but we got started early, and it looks like it could be a busy one. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say a man who put the pedal to the metal now has a set of metal handcuffs. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. They say that he led deputies on a chase that started in this area near Interstate 35 and Walsham Road. By the time deputies caught up with him, he had pulled into his own driveway on the other side of town. Well, they say they first spotted him shortly before one this morning. They say that man hit a guardrail on I-35 and cut off other drivers along the road. The deputies tried to stop him, but he led them on a chase, first on I-35, then onto Loop 410. They lost him for a while in the area near San Pedro Avenue, but deputies found him again after they say he ran a stoplight at Vance Jackson and Cherry Ridge. And once that man pulled into his own driveway, deputies moved in and arrested him on several charges. Reporting from the Northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Taking a look at one last check of traffic. Traffic time's looking uh, fairly good, but we are seeing some delays coming out of New Braunfels. 30 minutes right now. Here's a look at that on the map. Really the only area uh, we're seeing some delays. We'll take a closer look at that really quickly. This is coming out of uh, Comal County near the county line there, uh, down to 32 miles per hour. And then once you get to 1604, also seeing some uh, backups there. This is a 1604 on the west side. Delays building up to 13 minutes heading eastbound between Bandera and 281 and Mike, this is I-35 at Topper Wine Traffic Building. Yeah, and you can see that haze off in the background, like in this picture, all that haze out there. And we do have some fairly thick fog in places. Austin, uh, Beeville, up around Fredericksburg, some fog around Hondo, Uvalde, and New Braunfels has some as well. 67 degrees right now. Whole different story with all that humidity this morning and 85 later on today. Couple of showers are possible, maybe one or two over the weekend. It's not going to be a rain out, however. Thank well, you, guys. Thank you. We'll be prepared. A quick happy birthday to Rob Dabula. Thank you for waking up early with us, and everybody have a great weekend. See you at 9.